Generally, modern rebuttals to observation of inequality and the treatment of Native Americans ask the natives to let the past be in the past. They won't deny that atrocities happened, but they want to let bygones be bygones and move forward. Now, of course, this ignores the long-lasting impact of centuries of legalized murder, the current overwhelming problem of sexual assault of Native women, and the inability to prosecute rapists outside of the tribal community, the economic distress many people live in, and the ongoing industrialist push to keep destroying or restricting Native access to natural resources. But still, perhaps at the lowest bar, they at least do not try and say that the massacres carried out by the U.S. and European countries were good or permissible. Of course, there's always someone that can't pass the lowest bar. As seen by several people on Twitter, well, they could be trolling, so also by popular right-wing columnists and commentators, there is a still-present sentiment that the acts carried out by colonizers, American expansionist military, and war criminals were justified. They believe that the culture of the Native Americans were too primitive, as well as, and this is a common theme, too focused on killing one another for their own good. This argument rarely presents child murder or massacres as good events, although the most racist will still hold this view, but rather, they are content to portray any transgression as a necessary evil along the path to enlightenment. I would like to address these claims in three parts. First is the idea that Native Americans were not as advanced as their European invaders. Now obviously advancement can only be measured by comparison, and even then there is no direct superiority in almost any case. Still, the myths of the noble, always spiritually peaceful Native American has been dismissed, so let us dismiss also the myth of the culturally backward ones. Offsighted as one of the greatest things Europeans brought to the New World, medicine is far from unique to white people. In America, the syringe was used centuries before it was in Europe, and renowned ethnobotanist Daniel Mormon has cataloged over 2,500 medicinal plants used by North American natives, which is a potentially conservative estimate. Believe it or not, some people don't actually know this, Native Americans taught Europeans a lot about farming. Corn and tobacco were both first cultivated in Mesoamerica and named by the Taino of the Caribbean. Maize, winter squashes, and climbing beans formed the agricultural staple in Iroquois and Seneca cultures known as the Three Sisters. Botanists and gardeners may already recognize that these three complement each other. Beans fix nitrogen in the soil, and winter squashes spread out to prevent weeds. Maize is thin and tall and can grow alongside without interfering, as well as provide a place for the beans to grow up. These methods kept soil healthier than the European and American farming methods would until the time of George Washington Carver. Listing all of the plants Americans cultivated first would take hours. A common critique of native technology is a lack of a wheel. While some cultures did have wheels, the Americas did not have cattle, oxen, or horses to pull wheeled vehicles. Bison, like Cape buffaloes, are very hard to domesticate, but that doesn't mean the Americans didn't tame and breed animals. Pre-Incan Ecuadorians domesticated the Muscovy duck. Native Peruvians domesticated guinea pigs and llamas. The Thule had a dog in ancient Alaska and Greenland, which led to the Malamute and the Greenland dogs of today and were incredibly efficient transport animals, still used today in contrast with horse carriages, which have become outdated. Another critique is the lack of metallurgy. First of all, Baffin Bay Inuit crafted iron from meteorites. The Mapuche of Chile were, and still are, talented silversmiths. And the old copper culture of the Midwest, including the Hopewell and Mississippians, is perhaps the oldest metalworking culture in the world. Furthermore, the Wampanoag were encouraged by settlers to use metal crookware, but their earthen cookware was cheaper, easier to make, and less dangerous to prepare food, both in temperature and in contaminants. Furthermore, the use of textiles, skin, wood, stone, and bone across the continents would take forever to scratch the surface. While gunpowder reached the New World in 1492, natives were better at blending in with the environment. Hunters in the Great Basin used blinds while hunting birds. Inuit peoples avoided snow blindness with bonecrafted goggles superior to high-tech sunglasses of today. The Shoshone used decoy ducks centuries before Europeans, and starting with the red paint people, the toggling harpoon could take down mighty fish far away. Alaskan Inuits were, and still are, able to take down bowhead whales in a much more efficient fashion than any of the European settlers that they encountered could. While most of Europe still bowed to kings, democracy flourished in the areas first settled. Sachems in the Wampanoag and other Algonquin peoples in the New England area were elected by council. Furthermore, their successors were also elected. Nepotism played no part in the ruling class. The Iroquois Confederacy also had such sachems, 
which represented their people in larger councils. Even more progressively, sachems could be men or women, and were men and women, unlike the U.S. presidency. In fact, many Native American cultures treated women, as well as non-binary individuals, better than the rest of the whole world, up until, potentially, very recently. Secondly, I want to address the claim that natives were all killing each other and that the lawfulness of Europeans put a stop to that. A simple search on Twitter shows dozens to hundreds of people believing that lawless savages were going to bring about their own genocide. Now, you may have noticed that in my examples of advanced culture, I mentioned several different language groups, and there's a reason for that. There was no single American culture, and no single American people. Warfare happened in the Americas. This is not a sign that the Americans were savages, but rather that they were people. Untold millions of people died in the wars between the French and the British, but we never say that they were savages killing themselves. They are seen as separate entities, and should be, as should groups of people native to the Americas. But thirdly, and finally, none of what I just said matters. Yes, I know you're not supposed to say that, but allow me to explain. Racists claim that natives were backwards and primitive. They weren't. Racists claim that they were lawless and heartless. They weren't. But even if those claims were true, that does not justify the actions of the colonizers. Smallpox blankets were distributed to infect children. George Washington became general of the Continental Army, largely due to his record as a terrorist in the Seven Years' War, burning towns and residences, earning him the name of Canotocarios. Children were stolen from their families, and adults hid their ethnicity to have assumed white children. Dozens of languages are now extinct, cultures are erased, and an unknowable number of lives were ended. The atrocities were not accidents. They were not benevolent. They were attempted genocide. Sure, advances in medicine were brought from Europe, but Genghis Khan wasn't a noble man for doing the same. Sure, there were wars in Americas, but Johnny Begg is not venerated for stopping war by introducing the plague to Europe. The pre-Columbian native North and South Americans were not primitive savages, and atrocities are never excused by progress.